Now, the uh, networks, talking about the network perimeter, uh, leads fairly naturally to a discussion of network segmentation and subdomains. Now, again, um, you have something of the same difficulty here that you have with the network as a whole in terms of defining what is exactly the uh, network perimeter and, and therefore the security perimeter. Um, but if, if you are you know, careful with this, you can, in fact, um, create subdomains that compartmentalize uh, certain areas with regard to security. If you have systems that are dealing with particularly sensitive data or processing, then uh, you have the option of putting them on a subdomain uh, with systems of, of like sensitivity and protecting those as a whole. Um, network segmentation, I mean, in, in former days, it was often used as a, a way of maintaining at least some level of connectivity um, over a, a local area network, um, even if some of the links broke down. Uh, so that you would still be connected within uh, particular offices or particular buildings if you had, for example, a campus-wide local area network. Um, and even if the links between buildings broke down, at least you had uh, connectivity within, uh, uh, very often, departments, and so the people who would naturally be talking to each other anyways would be the ones who were still connected. However, um, again, you've got the problem of defining, um, and, and particularly with the devices and the mobile devices that we have nowadays, you need to consider that because, I mean, every, every cell phone that somebody connects to your network um, also has the capability of uh, having data connection through the cellular network, uh, possibly connecting with other devices via Bluetooth. And, and so once again, we have the, the difficulty of defining and, and managing, you know, what is uh, the perimeter here. And so what is included in our subdomain, how much protection do we have to give it because of the fact that we may have all kinds of devices with all kinds of capabilities and all kinds of vulnerabilities and back doors um, within your supposed secure subdomain. Uh, so we, uh, you know, but it is a tool that you can, you can use in that regard, uh, separating out the, uh, the systems that are, are particularly sensitive, that are particularly confidential, uh, that need high availability, you know, making sure that, uh, you have a segment that has, uh, very good, very stable, possibly multiple connections, uh, so that it is widely available. Uh, it depends on, you know, what you're, what you're dealing with. What is the most important aspect of security for these particular systems? And that then leads, again, fairly naturally, but... Uh, uh, some kind of what contrarily to virtual lands vlans and this is a situation where we are not 
segmenting the network physically. We are having traffic running over the same cable, the same media, this you know, possibly wireless, it, whatever. But um, by virtue of segmenting that communications channel, uh, possibly at the data link layer, we have a, a virtual local area networks and, and separation between these virtual local area networks. Now, uh, you know, if you, if you are running Ethernet and you want confidentiality for one of the VLANs, you're going to have to deal with encryption there because, you know, tapping into the cable um, opens the, the data to everyone. It's not just separating network from network, but, you know, possibly from attackers as well. So, um, again, VLANs, like subdomains, like network segmentation, is a tool that you can use to compartmentalize security, to manage security, to um, ensure that you have enhanced security for one group of systems uh, or, you know, different security for different groups of systems if you use the tool correctly. Again, you've got to manage it. You've got to make sure that the protections necessary to uh, the, the individual VLANs are sufficient to their needs. Uh, but yes, it is a tool that we can use to concentrate our security, particularly in certain areas.